Hi guys, I have not gone live in quite a while, but I thought I had some time to go live right now. Suddenly my nose is running, perfect timing. And I wanted to show you guys, okay, you guys know I love tea and I used to do like Molly's tea time on Instagram stories. Well, I haven't done that in a while. So I'm going to show you guys how I make my own matcha at home. It's like my favorite, one of my favorite drinks. I'm like suddenly out of breath, I think, because I'm nervous. <laughs> one of my favorite drinks to make at home. And um, when I found out how unhealthy Starbucks matcha was, I used to really like the Starbucks matcha. It kind of ruined it for me. One of my friends had to tell me how many grams of sugar was in it, and it shocked me. And then since I've started making my own matchas, I like love them. I mean, they don't always turn out perfectly because I kind of eyeball it, but um, they're really good and they're really healthy and it's like natural sweeteners, 100% better than Starbucks, way cheaper than Starbucks. So let's make a matcha together. If you're watching the replay, then yay. Hey, Natalie's here, hi. I'm showing everybody how I make my matcha tea and just chatting because I haven't been on like stories very much lately. So when I make matcha, I usually just do a teaspoon of matcha in the bottom. Hello. Um, and I'm waiting for the water to boil and I'm frothing up my milk. So I just buy, I'm not like super specific about what matcha I buy. I think I got this at grocery outlet. Some I've noticed can taste a little bit more bitter than others. So you kind of want to play around with finding a brand that works well for you. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to wait for this. Look at what I got for Christmas from my sister. I put this on my list and this is just going to add to the experience of me making matcha, my little frother. So now I've like gone to the point where I need this for stirring up the matcha in the bottom. So there's no like, you know, the chunks at the bottom. And then I have my milk frother just to heat up the milk and to froth it. I'm getting more elaborate, I guess, in how I make my tea. But, um, and then this is what I'm going to use to sweeten it. Have you guys seen this? It's the sweet drops the sweet leaf brand and i like the vanilla cream so what i used to do was i would just do like plain stevia and then i would add like alcohol free vanilla extract i guess you don't have to do that but i would just do that because i didn't want like the alcohol content because it's not being like cooked out of it um but now i just do this and it's like one less step and it makes it super easy so i guess i should have boiled the water before i started this but oh well that's okay Anyways, um, I thought, so I haven't been on stories as much. I'm trying to work on just how much time I'm like posting things on social media. What I've noticed about myself with social media is the more I post, the more I want to be on it and check it and see what are people saying and stuff. So anyways, I've been trying to post less. I still check it when I'm not posting, but um, yeah, where was I going with there? My brain just blanked. I don't know what I was going with there, but yeah, I haven't been on here to chat with you guys. So I thought it would be fun to talk about, my, my water's just boiling, um, a book that I'm reading, that I'm listening to. That's actually really good. Okay, before I do that, I'm going to show you guys, like, how am I going to show you how much, I guess I got to, can I flip the screen? I think I can. Okay, hold on. So I kind of fill up probably, I don't know, like this much in the bottom with matcha. It depends. I maybe added a little bit more then rondell's here hey hey i'm showing how i make my matcha tea okay so i put that in i kind of do like one quarter of matcha and then the rest milk so i'm coming over here getting my one of my best christmas gifts i've ever gotten <laughs> i just love this thing so much it heats up the milk and it froths it and because i don't drink coffee like i didn't really have a need for a coffee machine so I'm doing like three quarters of almond milk, kind of about there. And now I'm gonna flip the camera back around so you guys can see my face. Yes, I was saying that this is like one of my favorite drinks, Rondell, is making my own matcha because once I had a friend ruin the Starbucks matchas for me because they have way too much sugar in it. So I'm putting, I always like the froth on the top here. Can you guys see this? I'll show you guys after I get on get it in there. I like having a little bit of foam on top. My daughter, Emma, frothers. What did I, those, 
Oh, fritters. I was like, wait, did I say it wrong? Oh, and I forgot. Okay, so I forgot to use this because I've been talking. But normally, I try to do this, whatever, froth this up first so that the matcha doesn't get all like gritty in the bottom, but I forgot, so. Now I'm gonna add this in, the vanilla. And I, again, I kind of guess, here, you can watch me do this. I just love this stuff. I use these sweet leaf drops in um, my yogurt because I started getting unsweetened non-dairy yogurt and um, it makes it taste good and I can add whatever flavor I want because I have a couple different flavors. I have a plain and I have a toffee one, which is really good. I'll show you guys. Here we go. I have this one. This is another very good one by this brand. Anyways, so that is how I make my matcha. Doesn't that look so good? So it's just like this much matcha and then the rest is almond milk. And it's really good and it's healthy. And what I learned from Dr. Amen, if you follow him on Instagram, he is a, um, I always say psychologist, but he's not. He's like the doctor version, psychiatrist. And he said that green tea is the only kind of caffeine that he is a fan of because it has L-theanine, L-theanine, L-theanine. I don't know how to pronounce it. Do you know what I'm talking about? And it's good. It actually calms your brain. And I have noticed that like regular caffeine, I cannot do with my anxiety, but I can do matcha. If I've had protein before, I can do matcha. So thank you, Natalie. Yes, it's really yummy. And it's like a treat that I make at home. And the other day I went to Woods Coffee that's a chain that we have around here and they're usually pretty good for matcha and I got one and I was like this is terrible I had to throw it out so I was like wow I just wasted money on matcha and I could have made it at home and it would have tasted better that's the one that's the one problem is when you make your own coffee or your tea at home and you get a good habit then it kind of ruins going out so yes but mm, yes Rondell I know Green tea is actually really good for you. And I think it has other benefits too that I forgot, but um, yeah, it, it's supposed to help calm your brain. So I wouldn't necessarily have like multiple cups of it, of it in a day, but I don't notice jitters like ever really of having it. So, okay, now that I've made this, I hope you have a drink at home on this Saturday. Um, I wanna talk to you guys about a book that I've been reading and it's about, it's called 13 Things Mentally Healthy, is it mentally healthy? It's like 13 things mentally healthy people don't do, which is very interesting that it's not like 13 things mentally, mentally strong, that's it. 13 things mentally strong people don't do. And um, you would think it would be like on the positive, but it's like the negative, what they don't do. But it's, she talks about why in the book she talks about this. Anyways, the first thing she talks about that mentally strong people don't do is that they don't play the victim. And I thought it would be fun to share in stories a little bit about this because I know that I have a number of single moms follow me. And I know for myself, like whenever you go through something really difficult, life changing in life, that's super hard. It can be incredibly easy to become the victim. And I know even just like when I became a mom because I found out I was pregnant with Emma three months after we got married and it was like a surprise pregnancy and I think I kind of went through that vict victim mentality for a while because I was like, I'm not prepared. Like I've only been married three months. Like, you know, going, I'm not ready to have kids, like all of this stuff. And it's just very, very easy when life doesn't go our way, when we go through major difficulties to become the victim. And what's interesting that she said in this book is that um, one thing about people who have that victim mentality is they have a difficult time with relationships because like friendships or whatever relationships of any sort um because who wants to be friends with someone who's like always feeling sorry for themselves and i was like that is a really good point yes Rondell, it is so easy to get in the victim mindset to feel sorry for ourselves to say why me you know, I've had many times where you, you kind of get in this little hole and you start thinking like, I'm the only one that, that has gone through this, or I'm the only one that is struggling with this when that's not true. And especially if you are a single mom and you follow my um, channel, 
like you are not the only one. I will get messages from single moms that share with me their story and I begin to realize like, oh, this is not like a single phenomenon. It's like this happens to a lot of women. And what I realize is what's the difference between someone who is an overcomer of their circumstances and somebody who kind of gets paralyzed by their circumstances. One person says, okay, this happened with me, but whatever has happened with me doesn't have to determine my future, doesn't have to affect how I live the rest of my life. The other person, they go through a trauma and they decide that that is going, I don't know if they necessarily, well, yeah, they make a decision, maybe even if it's subconsciously, that that's going to affect the rest of their life. And they're carrying around that trauma with them blaming it for even future things. Well, this happened because of what happened in the past. This is the way my life is because of what happened in the past. When that's not true. You would see two people go through very different experiences and have extremely different outcomes. And like, what's the difference? It's people's choice of how they are going to, in the future, live their life. Exactly, Rondell says, we can still move forward while acknowledging it happened. Totally, totally. And the when we add in if we're a follower of christ like our whole perspective changes because instead of saying well i guess i must have been unlucky that this happened to me we can say no this is like there's a reason that god allowed this so maybe if i don't understand right now why this is happening like in the future maybe not on this side of eternity like god's going to show me why and there is a reason for this there's a reason for what i'm going through um and so I just want to encourage anybody who is maybe going through a really challenging time and you're, you know, even if it's like you're having a rough day, like I, I've had why me days and I've had why me periods of life, okay? They all range in size, but we can all get in that victim mentality with little things like, um, why did my day all go not as planned and big things? Why did this big life experience happen to me? But either way, um, we have a choice with how we're going to um, live the rest of our life, how we're gonna, how it's gonna determine, determine the rest of our days. Um, and sometimes we just need a minute, like we need a time to kind of like process. I'm talking about a bad day. Like we need a, a moment to process like, okay, this happened to me, that's a bummer. And then like, okay, what am I gonna do now? Like letting herself feel the feels and then move forward. Um, and then if it's like been a trauma that we that has happened to us over a period of time, like we definitely need to work through healing. It's not saying that you just like move on and you're like, well, I'll just sweep that under the rug. Like I'm not gonna let that determine my life. No, you've gotta work through it. And that's why counseling has been super, super helpful for me as a single mom and going through divorce and all of that. But um, again, we don't have to let that determine the future. And acknowledging the providence of God, that like God knows so much more than we could ever understand. Tomorrow I am teaching our single mom Sunday school group. It's my turn, we rotate, and we're talking about disappointment. And I'm gonna share one of a verse that has been encouraging to me since I was in high school, where it says, and I think it's Isaiah 26, it says, for my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And that's God talking, saying that God knows so much more than the picture than we could see he it's like we see this little tiny like zoomed in perspective and god sees like the way bigger picture like the concept of like the bird's eye view god sees and sometimes what's going on in our life isn't just about us and how it's affecting us but god has other people that he's going to use our story our sadness our trauma our difficulty to encourage and to change their lives for the glory of god and I really realized that in my own life, uh, I, I think I said this in my post that I posted for um, Christmas. I said, I, I don't even, eight years ago when I became, when I separated from my former husband, I could have never imagined that God was going to use what I went through to help encourage other single moms um, by my YouTube channel and helping out in this group, the single moms group that we have at our church. I never could imagine um, but it's so amazing how God turns our greatest difficulties into almost like our greatest triumphs in life. And if you think about a lot of people in the Bible that have gone through something very difficult, which a lot of the people that God used in the Bible went through something major. Moses, David, Joseph, Abraham. They all had like times where they didn't know what God was doing. David was on the run. 
God tells Abraham, you're going to have a son. And he has to wait years and years and years. Joseph has this dream about his brothers bowing down before him. And then he's like in prison for years upon years upon years. They all have this like wilderness period in life. And then when they come out of that, it's like, oh, that's like what God was doing. And sometimes some of us are wilderness periods, I think are longer than others. But the wilderness period those difficult trying times that we go through is when God shapes us, God works on us. Um, those are the people that become stronger people because they've been through it if they allow God to work in their lives. So anyways, this book, 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do is very interesting. That was just point number one. They don't play the victim, but the other ones are really, really good too. I haven't finished the book, but maybe I'll do a review on my YouTube channel when I get done. Anyways, I could talk forever, but it's fun to kind of <laughs> just chat on here for a little bit. If you make this matcha, let me know how you like it and what you think about it. And I, like I said, I definitely recommend these. If you're trying to like cut down on how much sugar, they're, I didn't say they're stevia sweetened, but yeah, Rondell, that book, so far it's good. I'm listening to it on auto, audiobook. I realize that's the way I can actually get through books. I listen to them while I'm working. Um, it's a lot just easier for me to listen than have time to sit down and read. But anyways, I love you guys and it's fun to chat on here. Thanks for joining Rondell and um, I will see you guys later. Okay, have a good rest of your Saturday.